Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, are you ready to make demand for your daily bread again? Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, I was sharing something yesterday uh, with you about the daily bread and how God, you know, supplied. And I said something yesterday. I said, we didn't even pray. You know, and, and the Lord just reminded me, I said, no, don't say you didn't pray. You made demand for your daily bread. I'm like, oh, that's true. <laughs> Praise God. I said, that's true. That's true. See, because as we're saying that in talking about rice, we had already asked God for our daily bread. And then the angels heard, like, oh, 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 hey, let's get this thing down to them. And truly speaking, in honor to the name of the Lord. That's how a lot of things come to us. And don't think, I'll tell you the truth. Don't think these things happen because I'm a preacher, or I'm a minister. No. No. God knows how to go around. He knows who to command. He knows who will obey his voice. He just knows. I'm telling you, he just knows. He knows. Oh, you need to believe God. You need to believe God. He you know, when Paul says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Now, now you think Paul was just talking about God is so rich, he can give you anything. It's beyond that. God's network. <laughs> God's network of supply is so perfect and accurate. Even if you are in the end of the world, even if your location does not have network, God still knows how to get supplies to you. <laughs> That's what I mean, according to his riches in glory. You leave your nation and you go far to the ends of the earth. Ah, God is still there. He can reach out to you. With that faith in your heart, thank you, Lord Jesus, can you make demand for your daily bread? Are you ready? Say, Father, I demand now and I receive from you my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, let's go to Luke. Luke, Luke, Luke. Now let's go back. Now you understand about daily bread. So let's go back to prayer. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Jesus spoke a parable to them because he wants them to understand. I'm giving in my own words now. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Are you praying or are you fainting? If you're not praying, you are fainting. I'll share with you on Monday about the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And I was talking to you about the, the wisdom of Daniel. Daniel truly was wiser than Solomon. But you see, the kind of wisdom that Daniel had was not the kind of wisdom that would make him popular. It's actually the kind of wisdom that will isolate him. The kind of wisdom Solomon had is the kind of wisdom that everybody wants to love you. Everybody wants to like you, you know? <laughs> that kind of thing. And, and guess what? Jesus said, woe is, woe is you if all men speak good of you. Now, those are things you draw wisdom from. So, now you want to be liked by everybody. You want everywhere you go, oh, nice guy. Oh, I love this guy. Ah, wow, I, I like you. Oh, you're cool. You, I, I just, you're just so simple. You don't have problem. Yeah. Wait until you enter into your elements and people begin, I like that guy, you will cry. You can't stay around him for too long because, ah, no, 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 no. Because, you see, Jesus said one of the things the Holy Spirit, now, now, that's how you know you carry the presence of the Holy Spirit. 
one of the attributes of the Holy Ghost in you is that he will convict the world of sin. He will convict the world of sin. Now, that doesn't mean you're going around stainless. You, know, you, you fornicated two nights ago. Don't come near me. You, you told a lie. In fact, just 40 minutes ago, you told a lie to one guy wearing a white shirt. Uh, please, don't. that's not what he meant. What's the, how does the Holy Spirit convict the world of sin? Please follow me. I'm sharing something with you. Your testimonies, your lifestyle, and your judgments in life will make people go, how do we keep up with this person? See, they are trying to understand you. The next thing that happens, you enter into another group. They are trying to ab absorb the one they thought they knew about you. And suddenly, like, are you a human being at all? These things you we see you do, these things we, you talk about, are they real? And so they try to keep on like, ah, huh. Now, it, it, it's like you've been friends with someone who believes he has to always um, steal or do deals. Now, I use the word deals to, to refer to corruption. He has to do some corrupt things to make ends meet. Now, that's the person's mentality. And you're friends with this person, okay? You don't even have to say, hmm, what you're doing is wrong. What you're doing is wrong. But you see, this person knows what he does to get money. But then he comes around you. And while he's talking to you, and then the phone call just comes in. You're like, uh, hey, how am I? Oh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you're on the phone now. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, yeah, I'm at home. I'm at home. I think I'll be at home. Mm -hmm. For like the next two hours. Oh, you're coming. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. I'll see you when you come. Okay. And then you joke like, ah, why were you just blessing the best? Like, you know, I was telling you that I needed to buy a new television. Like, yeah. Someone just called me and said, God instructed him to give me a new television. He's even bringing it here. It's like, ah. Now, when you say that to him, he remembers how he got his own television. He remembered what he had to pad in the office, you know, and then got that money and bought the television. And then you're, you're, you're with the same person and then the next thing you go like, ah, oh, ah, guess what? Yesterday, someone called me that he's bringing a new car for me. Like, eh, as in how? You're buying the car for me? No. Just, that like, he couldn't sleep last night, the night before, and then he just felt until he gives me this car, he will not have rest. So he's actually bringing the car. I think by today or tomorrow, the car should arrive. He's just wondering, looking at you. You see, the more you relate with that person, it gets to a point because the person will have to make a decision. Either they pull away from you. Why? Because you see, each time they see those things happen in your life, it convicts them. Like they are children of God, of course. There are people who just say, that's your own. I beg, I beg, I beg. But, but, but the, a righteous man who's living the wrong life, see, will be convicted. Like Now, whether he's a righteous man or not a righteous man, they'll be convicted. So they get to this point where like, you know what? I want to know what you know. Because I must live the same kind of life. Now they begin to follow to understand you, understand your truths. So they begin to ask questions. How do you pray? How do you study God's word? Okay. The other hand, on the other hand, there are people who are like, ah, please, I, 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 they just start withdrawing from you. They used to be close to you. All of a sudden, they, they stop coming around you. They're like, ah, I've not seen you for so long. Yeah, I'm busy. You know, uh, when there's something I'm trying to work on. Like, oh, really? You should have told me now. And when I, you know, how we, how we, truth is, they feel ashamed. Why? Because your testimonies, your lifestyle is choking them. And instead of them to yield to it, they feel, because that's how the devil deceives people. They feel that if they hang around you too much, they will lose the things that they have. Or they will not be able to gain things anymore. Because anytime now they want to do the next deal, it's like your picture comes before them. And like, ah, huh. 
So they now start feeling in their mind that maybe I should start staying away from this person so that I won't be convicted. Now, here is the point. Solomon's kind of wisdom attracts people. Daniel's kind of wisdom creates enemies. That's why you hardly heard that anybody plotted to overthrow Solomon. Okay, you hardly heard that. But how many times did they plot to kill Daniel? For not one action of his against them. So it's not like Daniel offended somebody. And they, now, what happened? They, they just felt, I mean, this guy, look at us, we'll be stressing ourselves here. And then this guy will just come up with one idea. And the king will just accept his idea because why can't we come up with those kind of ideas? It started from right when they got into Babylon. Oh, the king was serving everybody. Daniel just, a wisdom just came into his heart. So he said, I come never skipper, this A wisdom came into Daniel's heart. That's not what we're supposed to eat. So if that's not what we're supposed to, what are we supposed to eat? This is what we're supposed to eat. And it's available in Babylon. So he went to the right person and said, Sir, the Bible said he proposed in his heart that he's not going to eat any of them. Now you see, the wisdom of Daniel creates righteousness and holiness in him. The wisdom of Solomon allows for all kinds of things. Yeah. Yet, it is God that gave them to, so Solomon didn't get his wisdom by reading too much. God actually gave him the wisdom, okay? And Daniel was given the same wisdom by God. But he said the, the wisdom, we, and they were not the same. Yet, if I ask you, who was wiser? Most likely, you say Solomon was wiser. Why? Because it's the one that was known. But in heaven, you'll be shocked. Solomon's name is hardly mentioned. But Daniel's name is mentioned. That's the irony of life. So the, the question is, which one do you want? I remember when we, uh, when my wife was pregnant for her last born. Uh, and he's four years old now. So, I was, I was before, like we do with all our children. So I was, you know, Lord. Because normally, uh, the way God gives us children, apart from our first daughter, our first daughter, if you've heard our testimony before, that was, we were so focused on the battle that <laughs> we didn't consider a lot of things. So her name came the day she was born. Yeah, because the day she was born, we, we, we didn't even know it was a boy again, but while I was sitting there, and I said, Lord, and I heard the Lord speak to me, said, you shall call her Zura. And he told me all the things about the name. Now, before our second son, our second born, who was our first son, even before my wife was pregnant, the word of the Lord came to me, says, you will have a son, and you shall call his name Jotam, and dash, 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 dash. And the third child, God said to me, say, your next child shall be called Jasmine. And dash, 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 dash. And so when I heard Jasmine, I told my wife that, ah, ah, yeah, that means our next child is going to be a girl. Okay. So she got pregnant and we're just, we're leaving God for a girl. And then we went to do the test one time, you know, scan. And then like, ah, you want to know the sex of the baby? It told me, I felt like I already know that. I was like that. Like, okay, so what is it? He said, it's a boy. Look, this is, I said, boy? Huh? What happened? <laughs> you know, now, now, I'm using this to teach you something. So, because God says, the next child will be called Jasmine, okay? And the popular name that we know, Jasmine, is a girl, okay? So, the expectation was, it's a girl. And then, I went before the Lord, I said, Lord, he told me a girl. <laughs> he did not tell. Not, 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 I did not tell you a girl. I said, Jasmine. I said, eh? So, 
it's like saying your child's name is Elizabeth. <laughs> what, what, what will you be thinking? The Lord said, no, you're getting it wrong. He said, go and check. So I began to study. I began to study and study. Then I found out that the original name was actually for a boy. It was later, it became popular to be a girl's name and then they added the E. Now I found that in my study. <laughs> you understand? And I went, now the Lord had given me the reason he's giving that name. So it's not just the name now. I, I see the reason behind the name. So I went, whoa. So that's when it dawned on me that it was the ancient of days that was speaking to you. <laughs> see, he's not giving you current affairs or by he's not speaking according to today's world he's speaking according to truth from the very beginning and the same truth that will endure to eternity so god does not do trending things <laughs> i understand what i'm saying i came to the understanding that they're like wow lord i'm so sorry how come i didn't know this yeah now you know the word of god brings knowledge to you so now, we, we had not even decided, okay, so whether we're going to have another child or not. Most likely, we're just thinking, it's fine, you know, let's go, you know. And then suddenly, my wife, uh, 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 how? When? Hey, we didn't plan for this. What's the plan? You know, it's so like, okay, Lord, what do we do now? So, at the advanced stage, I began, because I like, Lord, you didn't tell me this one was coming. So, what's the plan? And then one day the Lord said to me, this is how he just spoke to me. He said, between the wisdom of Daniel and the wisdom of Solomon, which one do you want? Now, because I've been taught of the Lord already concerning these things. So it was a very easy decision to make. I said, Lord, I'll choose the wisdom of Daniel. Then the Lord said to me, he said, your son, he shall be called Daniel. And blah, 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 blah. Oh. So my wife, I said, we have a Daniel coming. <laughs> and this, 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 this. Now, I, I shared that to tell you, most, most people will go for Solomon because of the understanding that you have. But you see, when you are in fellowship with the Lord, and, and this fellowship is, it happens when you pray. When you're in constant fellowship with the Lord, I've told you this before, the whole purpose of every spiritual thing we do is so that we'll be able to make quality decisions. Okay? How would God ask a man between Solomon and Daniel, which one would you want? Now, the first thing you want to think about is the riches, the wealth, the fame. I would like to have a son who's famous all over the world like that. Now, this is God giving you an option. Oh, you don't understand. Some things that go, happens in, 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 in private with God, the world doesn't see it. They see the result of it. When God came to Solomon, it was in a dream. It was in a dream. He woke up from that dream and announced, God has given me wisdom. And everyone was like, what's he talking about? But in a few weeks' time, they began to see. So God gives you an option between this and this. Which one would you want? And then you think, now, well, if, if your heart and mind is not educated enough, and this education is not surface education, and this is as a result of prayer. You want to immediately think, wow, someone is great, you know. And you say, okay, God, I think I prefer someone, but not the women part, yeah. Lord, can you please remove the women's <laughs> men's side from me? But you see, it was the same mindset and wisdom that created the women, women parts. Okay? Because in his wisdom, he felt... Now, you know those days as king, you can marry as many wives and have as many concubines. He's allowed as a king then. 
Even you that is going to marry a king, you know that you will never be the only one. It's the mentality of the kings then, okay? So they didn't see anything wrong with that. It was just normal, okay? And God never cautioned any of them. Even Solomon, God cautioned him as about the kind of women he married. Not that he married men. He said, I told you, don't marry this outlandish women. They will turn your hearts away from you. So, it was okay. But you see, the guidance of the Spirit of God will teach you, this is better. This is better. You may not see the immediate benefits. The other one shows benefit quickly. This other one, you may not see the immediate outward benefit, but the benefit of it that it keeps you streamlined in the will and purpose of God. My time is up. <laughs> I hope this has been a blessing to you. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.